This is a little bit of introduction. This is going to be energy and momentum for rotations. So let me introduce uh, the old bit of uh, mechanical energy. E was we have a kinetic energy term plus a potential energy term. Okay. All good. Now, we also now have a thing that's rotating, and you can imagine if the entire thing is not moving, if it doesn't have translational kinetic energy, it could still have rotational energy. Right? You can we can pick a point on this. You know, if let me grab a spinning object here. Right? This thing sits here and rotates. A point that I mark out here could have significant kinetic energy. However, the whole thing isn't moving. So we have to account for the kinetic energy inherent in the rotation. That's going to look like a rotational mass times a rotational velocity. So it's going to be plus one half the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. So this is our rotational kinetic energy. And then we have our translational kinetic energy. And then we have our gravitational potential energy. So where this is coming from, if we have something moving in a circle, here's our object, and I'll have mass m, and we'll give it some tangential speed, and we'll put it at some radius r here, right? So this thing, this little chunk has energy one half mv squared. And we're going to put that in terms of these rotational variables. So we'll have one half m, and then this v squared is r omega squared. But we can regroup this instead of grouping these things, we can group these things. Oh, sorry, this, this squared isn't here. It's outside the parentheses. So this is going to be 1 half m r squared, omega squared. And this thing is i is the moment of inertia for a point mass. So if we have more of these, we add them up. And the idea is that whenever we have an extended object, the moment of inertia is just adding up the moment of inertia of all these little points. That was that I is integral for adding up where the point masses are and the integrals over each of the point masses. So it is a sum of all the point mass moments of inertia. All right. So this thing for a point mass, the kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. So for every object, its rotational kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. So let's solve some problems. Or let's solve a problem. We have a basketball. It's going to roll down a hill. And this basketball has a velocity of 6.6 .6 meters per second at the bottom of the hill. So, first off, we know this thing's rolling, so we're going to need a moment of inertia for a thing. Um, a basketball is a, a thin spherical shell. All the mass is out at the radius, and I have to find 
where I have moments of inertia in here. Here it is. A thin spherical shell, the moment of inertia, is going to be two-thirds the mass times the radius squared. And notice nowhere in here do I actually have the mass, or for that matter, the radius. So we could look up the radius of a basketball, or we can try to solve the problem in terms of the variables and see if stuff cancels out. So we're going to use this energy equation. Right, we're, this is If this were just a normal object sliding down this hill, it would be easy. We would identify the energy up here, and here the velocity is zero, and the angular velocity is zero, and so the energy is going to be one-half mv squared, so I'll call that the initial, plus one-half i omega squared, initial, plus mg h initial, which ultimately is just mg h initial. Right. Now down here is rotating, and we can write that the final energy is one-half mv final squared plus mg h final plus one half i omega final squared. It's going to rotate and it's going to uh, have some speed related to this rotation. And there's a relationship between the speed of the center of this thing and a point on the edge rotating. Those are the same. And both of those have to be r times the angular velocity. So now there, there's a reason for this. If we watch a thing rotate, the if I draw out how far it moves in red here on the ground and how much angle it rotates through, those have to be the same distance. So if it rotates once around, it'll cover the circumference on the ground. So this initial energy and this final energy has to be equal if there's no friction. So we can set those equal. And so we'll have mg h initial equals, well, here we're at the bottom, h is zero down here, so we won't have mgh final. That has to equal one half m v final squared plus one half i omega final squared. So we want to get an expression for h in terms of v final, which is the thing we know, and we want to get rid of all of this stuff. So we'll have one half m v final squared plus, and in one half and we put in what i is up here, the thing we looked up, is two-thirds the mass and then the radius squared and omega final squared. But this is v squared. And so we'll have one-half plus one-third is five-sixths mass times velocity squared. And it has to be mass times g times the height. So we got rid of the radius. And we don't have to figure out this final velocity. And now we can get rid of the mass. And so v squared is, sorry, v squared is 6 over 5 times g times h. Or h is 5 let me write this up here somewhere. Sorry about that. So we're going to solve the problem. Actually do the math here. H, based on this, is 5V squared over 6G. Did I drop? Nope, I have not dropped a 2. I put that in there somewhere. 
Fall asleep, computer. Oh no, it fell asleep. So, um, what we're going to do is plug in the numbers that we have as v squared and g and get h. Why did it fall asleep? And so we have 5 times 6.6 .6 meters per second squared over 6 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And we have a square root down here, don't we? No? No, that's fine. So we have 5 times 6.6 .6 squared divided by 6 divided by 9.8, and we get h is 3.70 meters. Isn't that good? Now, note that this includes extra energy. It includes the energy for this velocity, and it includes the rotation energy. If there were no rotation, which I'll do this in orange up here, if there were no rotation, you would have v squared over 2g is your height. Right, that would be from solving this energy thing and getting V is square root 2GH. And this would be 6.6 uh, .6 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.8. This would be 2.22 meters. So most of this potential energy is going into making it go at that speed, but a significant portion of it Almost 50% of it is going into making it rotate. And we can ask, what is this angular velocity at the bottom? And that's really easy. We'll just say it's r omega. And we don't know what r is, but we could solve this problem backwards. We could figure out what v has to be in terms of r and omega. Um, actually... Let's drop that. I think you actually do need R, whatever it is. So we'll not worry about that. Um, but in principle, if you knew what R is in the problem, you could figure out what the angular velocity is instead. So a lot of problems are like this. Uh, so we're going to pause here so I can set up something, and then uh, I will talk to you about another problem.